All right, thank you, and I uh, appreciate all the fist pumping. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about achieving predictable revenue with Google Ads. So the first thing I'm curious about, and I would love to see a show of hands, how many people here have, in the last 30 days, talked to their Google account manager or Google account strategist? Okay. All right, so, so not many of you. Um, this was me, actually, on the AdWords team at Google. You can see my co-founder, Dan, there as well. Um, and on the AdWords team at Google, um, it was our job to talk to thousands of customers like you guys. Customers that were looking to accelerate their growth with AdWords, agencies that were looking to help their customers grow. And it was our job to sit down, have 30-minute conversations with them, and really help them strategize. Now, the, the issue with these conversations, and something you guys have probably noticed when talking to your Google account strategist, is you end up spending 20 or 25 minutes going through the basics. You start talking about keywords, you start talking about optimizations, you start talking about bid adjustments, but there's really one big thing missing that you never get to talk about, and that's scaling your account, growing your account from $100 a day to $1,000 a day, and achieving predictable revenue and success. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. So I want to give you a story of one of our favorite customers that we worked with during our time there. Uh, this is John. John owns the, um, the largest flooring agency in all of North America. They actually build websites for flooring retailers. And he came to us at Google. He was spending, I think, a, a couple hundred dollars a day. And he came to us with a very basic question. And it was, I want to spend $1,000 a day more on my ads. Which campaign should I do it with? Uh, so this is a very basic question that he had for us. But when we dug in further, we realized you know, he was really interested not just in leads. He was interested in MQLs, or marketing qualified leads, and SQLs, sales qualified leads, just like the rest of us are interested in today. Now for him, marketing qualified leads is a retailer with at least one retail store. So they needed at least one store. And an SQL was a retailer with one store and doing at least a million dollars in sales. And this is actually what he was interested in. He wasn't just interested in leads. So like a good account strategist we were, the first thing we asked him was, all right, well, where are your retailers located? And he knew right away that most of the retailers he was trying to target were located in Florida. But when we looked through his account, we asked him, all right, well, where are you spending the bulk of your money? Where are the bulk of your conversions and AdWords coming from? And he had no idea. He looked through the account, we walked him through it, and he just couldn't figure out where the bulk of his money was being spent, even though he knew it was in Florida. And when we went through the process with him of trying to figure out where he was spending all of his money, we figured out why. It takes 10 clicks to actually figure out where you're spending your money on AdWords based on the state or even based on the country. Now, this is actually the old AdWords interface. We all know that Google launched Google Ads, which is the new interface. And lucky for us, it's gone from 10 clicks to 9 clicks. Uh, but it still takes a really long time to get there. Um, so we did find out that he does spend a lot of money in Florida, which is great. He gets a ton of conversions in Florida, which is great. But the next question was, now that we have this information, so what? So what are we going to do? We just spent 20 minutes looking for this. We did 10 clicks, maybe nine clicks, looking for this information. Now we actually have to do something with it. And what we realized is we spent all this time looking for this information, and we could only actually do three things to affect his performance. Number one was restructure his campaign. So we could have created a separate campaign only targeting Florida with a budget just for Florida. That way we can segment all the traffic there, control the budget, and really go after it. So that's option number one. Option number two was to make bid adjustments. So increase or decrease our bids based on the states he does really well, such as Florida, or the states he doesn't do well at all, such as the West Coast. Lastly, we could do exclusions. So that means excluding keywords, excluding placements, excluding states. But these were really the only three things we could do after spending so much time actually looking for this information. And that was the old way of doing things. And to be honest, the old way sucks. We spent all of this time. We did 10 clicks. It took us 20 minutes to find one data point, to do one optimization on one ad, on one ad which affected one keyword in one location. So I'm here today to talk about what we can do to achieve 
predictable, scalable revenue, not just small bid adjustments and optimizations. So rule one, we have, we have to know what true profitability looks like. Rule two, you have to structure your accounts like a data scientist would. And rule three, we have to optimize for predictable revenue. So let's dive into rule one. Know what true profitability looks like with Google Ads. So for some of us, true profitability looks like this. Similar to my co-founder, it's raining $100 bills from the rooftop, and that's what true profitability looks like. For some of us, and most of us, true profitability looks like we just want to get more money out than we're actually putting in, and that's really all we're trying to do. So let's go back to John. John posed one very basic question to us. I have an extra $1,000 a day to spend on AdWords. Which campaign should I spend it on? It seemed really, really easy, but we had a huge issue. He wasn't tracking conversions. He wasn't tracking MQLs. He wasn't tracking SQLs because it was too difficult to actually set up. It's a problem I've seen thousands of businesses have. And after talking to a lot of people here, it's a problem that a lot of people have um, overall. So when first digging into John's account, we saw three different campaigns. Campaign A, Campaign B, and Campaign C. This is all the information he had. He didn't have conversion tracking. This is all he had when he first came to us. So based on this information, we said, well, John, if we had to make a decision right now, we would tell you Campaign C is probably the best. You're getting the most traffic. You're getting the cheapest cost per clicks. We would choose Campaign number C. So then we kept working with him, and a couple weeks later, we finally were able to get Google Tag Manager up on his site. We were able to get conversion tracking going. And what we realized was Campaign C was also good for driving leads. Right? So we were driving retailers to his site that were filling out a form. We were unsure if they were MQLs or SQLs, but we knew that based on form fills, Campaign C was still the best option for him. As we continued to work together, we actually added advanced attribution, which I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. But we were able to track MQLs and SQLs for his actual site. And what we found was on the MQL level, campaign B was actually his best option. And on the SQL level, campaign A was actually the best option. Now, this is crazy. I remember talking to him and saying, you know, if you had spent $1,000 a day extra on campaign C, you would have driven nowhere near the profitability that you were looking for. And that was simply because he didn't know how to track MQLs and SQLs inside of AdWords, and it's a problem we all face every day. So what can we learn from this John example? We need to be tracking down to the MQL or SQL level to advertise with confidence and to drive the most profitability for our business. So how did we get there, and how did we help John get there? We helped him implement advanced attribution with Google Ads and Google Sheets. So I'm going to talk about advanced attribution, how you get this set up, um, how you get this set up with lead forms and phone calls, which I know uh, most of us, how most of us generate leads. Um, I'm going to get a little bit into the weeds, and it is a little complicated. I did put a QR code up here if there's any issues along, or I'm talking like I'm from New Jersey and talking too fast. Um, you can always take a picture of that, and it will take you to a page where you can actually just download the template or download the deck. Uh, that way, you have the information at all times. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of actually adding this advanced attribution first. So step one, you have to enable auto-tracking inside of AdWords. You actually have to go inside of AdWords or Google Ads. Um, you have to go to Settings. You have to go to Account Settings. And there's a very simple toggle that says Enable Auto-Tracking. Pretty straightforward. Step two, you have to create a conversion. So you actually have to go to Tools and Conversions. And you want to create a conversion, one for MQL and one for SQL. As you do that, it's also going to ask you for a value. So if you know the values of your MQLs and SQLs, you can put them in right here. If you don't, you can leave them blank. Step three, you actually have to export all of your previous MQLs and SQLs from your CRM. Now, we were doing this with John every single day. It was a manual effort, but every single day we were exporting all the MQLs and SQLs that he got signed up, taking their Google Click IDs and basically uploading them to AdWords. And this is how we uploaded them. So Google provides you with a very simple Google Sheet. So after you download your data from your CRM, it'll come into a CSV. 
Now that CSV will be formatted a lot of different ways. If you've ever downloaded data from Pipedrive or Salesforce or HubSpot, you'll know that it comes with a whole bunch of fields in a bunch of different ways. Now you can actually upload that data into Google Sheets. Google Sheets provides you with a very, very basic template to upload this data. We actually took this template, made it a lot more robust, put instructions in there on how to do it, and made it really easy for you guys to use. So again, if you take a look at this, you can actually use this template to upload your MQLs and SQLs. After putting it into that template, you then need to automate the upload of this. So when you automate the upload of this, you can do this right inside of Google, and you can tell Google, hey, pull from this Google Sheet every single day or every couple of days. Now, the problem with this was this was manual. Every single morning, we were doing this for John because he was one of our best customers. He was spending over $1,000 a day. And he was spending over $1,000 a day and not even tracking MQLs and SQLs. He was simply tracking conversions. And from the example I showed you before, he very easily could have lost 30% of his profitability by not tracking the MQLs and SQLs. So as we continued to scale, he started using softwares to help him automate. And I would highly suggest using these as you guys continue to grow. So on the CRM side, you obviously have Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive. All of them have really good integrations into AdWords, and the data downloads really easily. On the call tracking side, um, he started using CallRail, call tracking metrics, and PhoneWagon. Right, these are three call tracking softwares where he could listen to all of the calls. He could tag them as MQLs or SQLs and actually upload them. And then lastly, he used some automation with uh, Zapier and If This Then That so that he could automate a lot of these tasks. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, you have to structure your accounts like a data scientist. So the savviest digital marketers know that the more data we have, the better we can optimize. But what's the best way to do this if you don't have a data science team? Most of the customers that we worked with didn't have a data science team, didn't have engineers, didn't have data engineers, really had no technical support. But we had to help them go from acting like marketers to digital marketers to actually data scientists. So the way you do this is when setting up an AdWords account, you need to be as granular as possible from day one. With Google, you can't retroactively go back and look at data. You need to add in as many targeting options as possible. You need to pull out all the targeting options once you get started on a campaign so that you can collect as much data as possible. Because again, you can't go backwards. And I'll kind of walk you through how to do that right now. So there are five main buckets in terms of where you can get data from Google Ads, how you can optimize with Google Ads, and how you can learn more about your customer. The first one is location, then audience, then devices, ad schedule, and demographics. So let's take location level first. Most customers are targeting, let's just say, North America or let's say the United States. But what, if you're doing this, you should also pull out every zip code, city, state, territory, income level, central commercial area, university, and airport. Now, that might not make sense for your business, but I can tell you that when we were working with John, what we realized was he was actually spending a lot of money with customers that were actually around universities. And what he found was that he was trying to get a lot of retailers who were clicking on his ads around universities, but they actually weren't signing up, maybe because they weren't profitable because the students around there weren't buying that much flooring. Uh, so you never actually know what you're going to find in this data. The point of this exercise is to collect as much data as possible, eliminate all biases, and then as soon as you actually see the data, make actionable decisions based on it. So with devices, you can pull out things like desktop, tablet, and mobile. With ad schedule, you can look at things like day of the week, time of the day. Uh, something that worked really well for us was clustering the times of the day for breakfast hours, lunch hours, and dinner hours, and kind of segmenting them like that. You can look at business hours versus non-business hours. And then on the demographic side, you can look at things such as age, gender, and parental status. Now, the biggest thing people miss is overlaying all of this with remarketing audiences. So there's two ways you can layer remarketing audiences on top of all of these demographics. It's called target and bid or bid only. I would recommend using bid only. What bid only means is if you layer your marketing audiences on top of all of these demographics, 
you are telling Google, hey, I want to know everyone that's part of this remarketing audience, but don't only show to people in this remarketing audience. Show to everyone. But if someone shows up in one of these audiences, please let me know. So for example, you can upload our marketing audience of people that have visited your site. You can upload a list of your customers, similar to your customers, similar to your traffic. That way you can, you can say, OK, this customer in Florida was similar to my website traffic. They were of this income level, and they were of this demographic. That's all valuable information for you to know about your customer in terms of optimizing, but also for your other marketing messages outside of AdWords itself. OK, so rule number three, optimize towards predictable revenue. So once you have layered all of, this, all of this targeting and you start collecting data, it's time to do something with this data. You don't want to just collect data to do nothing with it. You want to start optimizing. OK, so there are two different types of ways that you can optimize. You can optimize manually, you can optimize with software, or you can optimize um, with Google's automated tools. The truth is, you're going to want to use a mix of both. The best customers we've ever worked with do use a mix of manual optimization, some of Google's optimization, and some third-party softwares. And I'm going to walk through some of those different opportunities. So on the automated side, there's kind of four buckets of a way to automate some of the optimizations in your account. The first way is with Google's smart bidding. So Google smart bidding allows you to bid towards campaign goals if you have enough data. So you can optimize towards clicks, impressions, target CPA, target return on ad spend. Uh, but again, you need enough data to actually take advantage of these automated rules. The second way, and one of my favorite ways, is to set up automated rules. Uh, so automated rules are basically if-then statements. So if my CPC goes above 5 and my CPA is above 50, take XYZ action. I'm actually going to go into that on the next slide. But automated rules did about 90% of our work at Google as account managers. And some of the best customers we ever worked with did all of their work with automated rules. And I'll get into that in a second. The next automated uh, strategy you could take is work with third-party software. Right? We've built software to help customers optimize their accounts. Um, there's a lot of other softwares out there that allow you to do that, but that's another approach that you can take. And then lastly, you can use scripts. Uh, Google has a really awesome scripts console. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And there's a lot of turnkey scripts that even if you know nothing about engineering and you've never seen code before, you could actually use these scripts. One of my favorite websites is uh, freeadwordscripts.com. Very straightforward. Um, and on that website, there are actually a bunch of out-of-the-box scripts that you can copy, paste right inside of AdWords. And what's cool about these scripts is they'll actually pull third-party data from you. So you can look at things like, how do you convert when it's raining? Or how do your conversion rates change with traffic? Or how do your conversion rates change with the change in politics? So I'd recommend checking out freeadwordscripts.com. It's a good way to just take some outside-of-the-box scripts and put them right inside of your AdWords account. Now, on the manual side, you can do things like manual bid adjustments, right? So increasing or decreasing bids by location or device, kind of some of the things that your account strategist might talk to you about or your digital marketing managers might do. Uh, you, can, you can work with your keyword structure, which I'll get into on the next slide, and really utilize keyword structure to optimize performance. You can use the search terms report. Right? So those of you that don't know the search terms report, that'll show you what people are searching for and why they're clicking on your ads. You can then go through the search terms report and eliminate any wasted spend, a really good way to lower your CPA and limit any waste. And lastly, you can do display placement optimization. And that's just excluding websites that you don't want your ads to show on, which I'll show you how to do in a second here. So I mentioned automated rules. Uh, this is actually the rule set that we used at Google uh, for tons of our customers. I'm going to say that this did 80 or 90% of the work that me being a Google account strategist and my fellow coworkers did to help optimize customers' accounts. Um, we basically created a long set of rules, a lot of if-then statements that would allow us to optimize CPAs based on certain CPC benchmarks that our data science team found to be most useful. 
Uh, so if you are thinking about automated rules, feel free to download this. I won't get super in detail on it. Uh, but this is a perfect template where you can just plug in your CPCs, your target CPA, and you can let Google automatically optimize for you. So one of the biggest things people miss when it comes to keyword structure um, is how do I set up my account? So if you guys are running search campaigns, keyword structure is extremely, extremely important. So if you're running a search campaign, here's what you need to do. You need to have two separate campaigns, one of them being broad match modified campaign and one of them being an exact match campaign. The broad match modified campaign is your prospecting campaign. For those of you that don't know what broad match modified is, it's a keyword type that allows you to show up for variants of that keyword, and it's where you put a plus sign next to each keyword. So you want to run your broad match modified campaign over 30 days or whatever is statistically significant for your uh, campaign and budget. Then when running that, you want to use the search terms report. The search terms report is going to say, all right, based on these keywords, here are actually what people typed into Google. So we'll show you a long list of searches that people actually typed into Google to find your ad. What you can then do in the search terms report is two things. Eliminate traffic, or if you find a set of keywords or search terms that are doing really, really well for you, what you want to do then is have an exact match campaign. You want to move those search terms over to an exact match campaign. You want to use single keyword ad groups in order to get the best quality scores. And then you want to increase bids by 20 or 30%. The reason you want to do this is you can then control budget to your best performing search terms. And rather than you coming up with the search terms, you're actually using data from your broad match modified campaign to make smart decisions like a data scientist would do. I can tell you that almost every single customer we worked with at Google that was spending over $1,000 a day, every single one of them had this structure. It's hard to go backwards, so if you are thinking about scaling up these accounts, I would highly recommend starting this now. Even if it's a little bit extra work up front, it'll save you a ton of work in the future. So when it comes to search terms report, to me, that's one of the most underutilized tools within Google. Customers are telling you what they're searching into Google to find your ads. That's like the perfect market research you could possibly do. Now, we use search terms report a lot internally, right? We use the search terms report to, f to change our messaging on our landing pages. We use it to change the messaging on our ads. We use it to find new keywords. We use it to find keywords we don't want to show up for. And sometimes we find things that people are searching about Todd Saunders ad hoc and saying weird things about me, and that's also kind of interesting. Um, so the search terms report is something in Google that people kind of breeze over. Um, it's one of those things that you can spend five minutes in or you can spend 500 minutes in. But I will tell you it is a very, very powerful tool, not just for optimizing your ads account, but also for updating your marketing messaging and your landing pages. OK, so lastly, I want to talk about display campaigns and how to structure those. It's very similar to the search campaigns that I spoke about before. So on the display side, you want to have two different campaigns. Similar to search, where I said you have a broad match modified and an exact match campaign, it's a very similar strategy on display. You actually want to have a topics or interest campaign, and you want to have a placements campaign. So the topic or interest campaign allows you to target topics of websites or interests of people. What you're going to do is you're going to run that campaign, and Google will show you what's called a placements report, very similar to the search terms report. But what this will tell you is here are all the websites you actually showed up on. So I'll give you a real life example. Um, if John, um, who we've been talking about a lot today, targets people who are interested in flooring, well, he doesn't know which websites he's actually going to show up on. He might show up on ESPN. He might show up on a cooking blog. He's only targeting the interest of the person. The placements report will show you all of the websites you actually showed up on. Now, you may go through all of these websites and say, wow, this website right here has a 30% conversion rate. This is incredible. I wish I could spend more money on this website. That's why you have a separate placements campaign. So what you're able to do is take that placement, exclude it, move it over to your placements campaign, increase your budget, increase your bids, and then double or triple down on that placement. You want to continue that process over and over and over again. I would say the biggest mistake that I've seen people make is they create a placements campaign and they say, I know my customers are on this website, or I know my customers like this website. 
that is a huge bias, and I'd highly recommend staying away from that. Instead, use this strategy. Create a topics or interest campaign for prospecting. Find the placements that work for you based on data. Your customers will tell you. You'll see the data where they're actually converting, and then turn that into a placements campaign. So there's four final things here to remember. Number one, make sure you're tracking conversions down to the MQL or SQL level. Don't be John. Don't put your extra $1,000 a day on campaign number C where you actually aren't getting your MQLs or SQLs. Make sure you're tracking this as granular as possible. Number two, structure your accounts like a data scientist. You don't need an engineering degree. You don't need to be a data scientist. You don't need engineers on your team to do this. You can structure your accounts like a data scientist today and utilize that moving forward. Number three, Leverage automated and manual optimizations. You're always going to have to use both. Never fully rely on a software and never fully rely on yourself to fully optimize these accounts because it'll be a massive time suck. And lastly, make sure you're using broad match modified campaigns paired with exact match campaigns on search and on display. Make sure you're using interest and topic campaigns matched with placement campaigns. That is how you optimize for predictable, scalable revenue. Thank you.